Hello, welcome to Community Forum. My name is Roy Cohn and I'll be hosting this uh, special holiday edition of the show. And uh, we have two uh, folks, two guests from the AAA uh, office in uh, Providence. Uh, we have uh, Mary McGuire. She's our usual twice, three times a year guest. She has all that important information about where to go and when to go and all that kind of stuff. And you occasionally hear her on the radio talking about how much more you're going to be paying for gasoline. We <laughs> never hear about you paying less for gasoline. I know, unfortunately, just, every once in a while. You're the bearer of bad tidings. <laughs> and we have, so we have Mary. She's the Director of Public and Legislative Affairs. And we have uh, Mark Sh Shieldrop. He's the assistant, uh, no, he's the AAA public affairs specialist. And now that we're beyond the tough part of the show, I welcome you both to the show. <laughs> Thank you. And, Thanks for uh, having us. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, happy Halloween. It's that time <laughs> of the year. All the witches will be out in their brooms and uh, uh, raising havoc with the uh, local homeowners, I guess. I don't know. My kids tell me I have a broom, so I'll be out there too. You have a power broom? <laughs> That's what my kids tell me. Huh. <laughs> When they're Mark, why don't we start off with you uh, sure. talking about AAA tips for a happy Halloween. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's great to be here, Roy. Thank you. Um, so Halloween is a fun time of year, right? I have two little girls, and they're looking forward to it. And uh, it, it should be a, a fun night to get some candy and hang out in the neighborhood. But at AAA, we're all about traffic safety. And we do have some, some tips to help encourage people to be cautious and mindful that there's going to be children and people throughout the neighborhoods. So, um, you know, one thing that we like to, to remind people is to slow down. You know, drive slowly in these neighborhoods at night. Um, the difference between 25 and 35 miles an hour can increase the likelihood of uh, a fatality, a pedestrian fatality, um, by, it could double it. So, sure. um, you know, drive slowly. There's going to be kids and parents in the streets. Um, so it's really important that people be mindful that there's going to be children potentially darting out between parked cars um, and avoid those neighborhood cut throughs. So stick to the main roads if you can. If you have a habit of, you know, you're making your little shortcuts to get home quickly, stick to the more general route because those small neighborhoods are probably going to have a lot of folks in them. Um, another tip is um, buckle up. A lot of times parents, they'll shuffle the kid from one house to another and you might, you know, think you're, I'm only driving two houses down, I don't need to buckle up. Actually, you need to buckle up every time you're behind the wheel and driving. Nowadays, cars will kind of nag you if you're not buckled up, so right. mind that beep, buckle up. It's a good habit to get into. It is. It is. I even wear my seatbelt when I go through the car wash. You should. You should. <laughs> That's you never great. know. We Absolutely. love people like yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. You know, there are also things that parents can do to make sure that their children are safer on Halloween night. I mean, first of all, if your parents are young uh, or if your children are young, you want to make sure that you stay with your, your kids um, or that you stay close by. Uh, you also want to make sure that they're wearing uh, bright colors, reflective clothing, mm -hmm. some type of reflective gear as part of their Halloween costume. They should have flashlights with them. So anything that you can do, again, especially if your children are small, to make them more visible to passing mm -hmm. motorists is really important. I think, that, I think that the parents should get out of the cars and stay with the children, especially with all the stories you hear about the uh, predators that are out there. And if you have kids that are without the parents, they could be uh, running into problems. So I think the parents should get out of the car, park the car, walk the street, and then come back to the car and do your next one. Yeah, and along with good exercise, it's a chance to enjoy the moment with your kids. It's always sure. fun watching your child in the costume, go up the steps, and people usually have a good laugh and they like to see the costumes. And another recommendation is group up. If, you, if your friends are f friendly with other parents in the neighborhood, Form a team, because the more eyes you have on that group of kids, the better. A great idea. Yeah. You also have to be aware of the, uh, the uh, hours. Uh, the days are getting shorter, and the walking is going to be uh, in darkness. Right. That's right. The time for ghouls and ghosts is usually after dark. You yeah. know, it adds to the ambiance, but at the same <laughs> token, that's when most incidents involving vehicles and people occur. So. Have you got your outfit ready? <laughs> you know, my daughters are kind of bugging me. They want me to, to wear a costume, and uh, so I'm thinking about what I'm going to do. Uh -huh. We'll surprise you. We'll bring yeah. photos the next time yeah. we're on the show. We That'd actually have a couple of Halloween safety videos uh -huh. uh, that we've put together at AAA Northeast. They're nice and short, and I believe that Mike has them for us, so we'd love to show them 
to you now. Halloween is an exciting time for everybody, but for those of us who are on the road at night, it can be difficult to navigate our community safely. With the vast numbers of trick-or-treaters, drivers need to be especially alert and attentive. Here are some tips for you to remember. Firstly, slow down. Slowing down will allow you more time to react to potentially risky situations due to heavy pedestrian traffic. Carefully enter and exit driveways and alleyways. Keep your headlights on even in daylight to increase your visibility to pedestrians. Obey all the traffic signs and signals. Watch out for children crossing the road in unexpected locations. This may be the first night that children are navigating their neighborhoods as a pedestrian. It's an exciting night for children and some may run into the street, so make sure you drive defensively. And as always, stay vigilant and avoid distracted driving. Drive safely and have a happy Halloween. Fall is a fun and festive time of year for all, particularly on Halloween. AAA wants to help keep parents and kids safe while out trick-or-treating. By knowing the risks and avoiding behaviors that are unsafe, we can avoid problems and maximize our fun while we are out trick-or-treating. Make yourself as visible as possible by utilizing reflective tape, flashlights, glow sticks, and light-up shoes. Avoid dark colored costumes and use face paint instead of masks. Choose comfortable, properly fitting shoes. All the better to walk in, my dears. Avoid long dresses or capes. It's trick-or-treating, not trip-or-treating. When walking, try to travel in a group and be aware that drivers may not be paying attention to pedestrians. Always walk on the sidewalk when available. If no sidewalk is available, walk on the left side of the road or against traffic. Stay out of the road as much as possible when trick-or-treating by walking down one side of the block, crossing the corner, and then finishing with the other side of the block. While you're out trick-or-treating, be safe, be seen, and have a great Halloween. Great tips. Yeah, be safe, be seen, and have a great Halloween. What's better than that? And by the way, that's Adele Zoker, who works out of our Connecticut Public Affairs Office at AAA, and Joanna for Georgia, who works out of our Providence Office. They mm. did a great job, and I loved Adele's witch's hat. She looked great. I, I think you would have looked great. You should have <laughs> had it here. <laughs> we can do a Massachusetts version. There you go. Um, the, other, the other point, um, you don't want, uh, you want to drive sober. Don't drink. Save that for when you're home. Don't, don't drive and... Uh, you're right, Three. absolutely. And it's a night where a lot of people go to parties, especially the older set. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's a night to have a designated driver or, you know, get an Uber or a Lyft if you've, if you've had too much to drink. Don't take the risk. Absolutely. And don't drive distracted. So you don't want to be rolling through a neighborhood. You know, as Mark says, you should be driving slowly. As Adele said, you should be using your headlights, maybe your brights if it's Halloween night. But you don't want to be looking at your cell phone because it's that one or two seconds that you're looking down at your cell phone that you can cover. Uh, a tremendous distance uh, in your car, and that could mean a pedestrian injury or fatality. And it goes, it goes, sorry, interrupt. It goes for the parents too. If you're with the kids, maybe put down that phone. You know, take pictures of your kids. But right. when you're walking from house to house, keep that phone in your pocket. Keep your eyes on. Them. One, one thing that really bothers me as a professional driver is I see at intersections people talking on their cell phones without looking to the left or the right to see if it's going to be safe to do so. So the same would hold true at night. Stay off the cell phones, leave it in the car, and pay attention and enjoy what the kids are doing. One of the things that we teach people at AAA is that based on our research from the AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety, the conversation itself that you're having on the phone is a major distraction Absolutely. because it's a cognitive distraction. It takes your mind off your driving. So people often assume that if they're hands-free, for example, but talking on the phone that they're completely safe, mm -hmm. but that really provides drivers with a false sense of security because as long as you're talking, you're thinking about your conversation, especially if it's an involved conversation, with your boss about a budget or with your husband about something you're arguing about over the, the kids or something like that. So these are really potent distractions when you're having a conversation in the car. So don't talk, especially on Halloween night. Right. I agree with you totally. All right. Let's talk about some of the things to do. 
Sure. So from the uh, warnings about safety to the fun stuff of Halloween. So uh, we uh, thought we would talk about an activity that's right here in our backyard uh, in Sharon, Mass. And that is the uh, Moose Hill uh, Audubon Society uh, Preserve, which is a tremendous uh, conservation area and my son used to volunteer there in fact when he was in high school so I've spent quite a bit of time there over the years but one of the things that we always enjoyed doing every single Halloween and we probably did it five or six years in a row when my kids were growing up is the Halloween Prowl which you just saw a sign for so the Halloween Prowl is really um, a walk through Moose Hill through the woods lots of scary ghouls and goblins jumping out at you but also a really terrific history lesson on the history of Halloween that they mm -hmm. provide there. And it's a really popular event. Um, that's coming up this weekend, the 26th and 27th of October. And they do a tremendous job there. And they get really big crowds, too. So it's really a fun event if you've never done the Halloween Prowl at Moose Hill. Uh, another really fun thing to do, a lot of people love Old Sturbridge Village. Right now, we've got great foliage, uh, beautiful leaves out there. Take a drive. Uh, down the Mass Pike to Old Sturbridge Village. You can check out the village and all of the tremendous uh, attractions there, but also you can do a trick or treat there this weekend. So uh, October 26th, 27th, uh, you'll be able to trick or treat with your children uh, at Old Sturbridge Village. So lots of fun there. You can always go and take in the sights at the village during the day and then as it gets dark, you can uh, merge right into the trick-or-treating. So mm -hmm. that's always fun. Uh, one of the biggest attractions we have in New England right now, and it's something that's been going on for quite a few years, is the Jack-O-Lantern Spectacular at Roger Williams Park in Providence. So this runs through November 3rd. You can see uh, the tree with all of the little uh, carved pumpkins on it. Uh, there are also giant pumpkins that are carved at the Spectacular, but this is really a tremendous display, as you can see here, of artistry. I mean, it is amazing the detail. Uh, you see Harry Potter there that's used to carve these pumpkins. These people are true pumpkin craftspeople who do the carving. And uh, it's just an amazing trail uh, through uh, the park. Again, it takes about 45 minutes to do. Uh, you see the cast of Frozen there. So every year there's a theme. Uh, that we see at the Jack-O-Lantern Spectacular. And this draws uh, thousands and thousands of people to Roger Williams Park in Providence. We see the Peanuts characters there. So there's really something for everyone. Sometimes it's a baseball theme. Sometimes it's a football theme. I'm sure Tom Brady has been immortalized in a pumpkin there at some point. Mm. Um, so uh, really a terrific event running through November 3rd in Providence. We've also got uh, the Canopy Lake Park Scream Fest up in New Hampshire for those who want to head north. And this is held on fall weekends and there are five haunted houses at night. And plus you can still enjoy the park. So I happen to be a big fan of uh, Canopy Lake Park. I used to take my kids there all the time when they were growing up because my husband's from New Hampshire. So you can enjoy all the park rides that you just saw there, games, live shows and attractions, including six Rocktoberfest bands. So not just all this scary stuff that you're seeing right now in the village, et cetera, the five haunted houses, uh, pirate ships, but also uh, all of the great uh, live shows, attractions, rides you can enjoy. And it's a way for Canopy to extend their season, you know, which certainly you know, businesses need to do. So it's great to go out and support them as they're doing that. Um, also want to encourage people to head north, not as far as New Hampshire, but to the North Shore to Salem. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, Salem is really, uh, you know, the uh, sort of unofficial uh, hub of haunted happenings. That's where uh, it all started. <laughs> that's right. That's where it all started. So uh, when I was a reporter at Channel 10, we used to go to Salem every year to do stories and witches are walking down the street. Uh, there are all sorts of people dressed up in costume really for the whole month of October. Um, and uh, there are many, many haunted happenings in October with haunted houses, psychic readings, parades, and a lot more. Uh, you can also uh, go to check out the uh, original sites of the Hocus Pocus movie. If you are a fan of that particular film, uh, there are many locations that are uh, featured in the film that you can see in real life if you uh, head up to Salem. Also, if you're going to Salem, the House of Seven Gables is a great place to visit. Um, this, of course, made famous by uh, the author Nathaniel Hawthorne, and you'll learn a lot about the Salem witch trials. Uh, 
through the eyes of, of Hawthorne and through a tour of the house. So uh, very interesting in terms of learning the sad history of the Salem witch trials. Um, but again, very educational, very interesting to go visit the House of the Seven Gables. Um, now, a lot of folks, including Mark, who I think took his kids there recently, love to go to Edaville Family Theme Park. And we actually uh, now have uh, the ability to go to Edaville and celebrate Halloween. So we're going to show you that with a special video. Nice. Edaville's annual Not So Spooky Halloween. This kid-friendly trick-or-treating event encourages guests to dress up in their favorite costumes. Trick-or-treat at every ride. Admission includes unlimited use of 90 rides and attractions, Thomas Land and Dino Land. Massachusetts and Rhode Island residents save up to $7 off online at Edenville.com. Every day search a thrill at Edenville, Edenville Family Theme Park. And Mark's going to tell us about some additional attractions. And we're traveling, I think, to Newport, Rhode Island now, Mark? Yeah, Fortress of Nightmares. So this is a, a really interesting take on the haunted house. So first of all, you're in Fort Adams. In, uh, in Newport, which is a historic military base. So right. if you've ever been to the Newport Folk Festival, you may be familiar, familiar with it. Well, you can imagine at night with some high-tech displays, you've got dark tunnels and actors jumping at you. They've got a creepy maze that you need 3D glasses to <laughs> escape. That sounds fun, right? Um, so it runs through the last three weekends of October. And uh, there's always uh, something new every year. So it's been a relatively recent uh, addition to the festivity scene here in, 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 in the new southern New England area. Um, so they're always trying something new. This year there's a new virtual reality component. So I don't know if that's up your alley, Roy, but <laughs> if you've ever been curious about what it's like to step into another dimension and have your socks scared off, it uh, might be worth checking out. I uh, don't like my evenings uh, sleep interrupted <laughs> by scary stuff. Thank you. No. Um, and another thing that uh, might be worth checking out is uh, Pumpkin Fest at mm -hmm. the Whitney's Farm, Mar in, uh, Farm, Farm Market and Garden Center in Cheshire. Um, so, you, you know, your classic pick a pumpkin, hit the haunted uh, corn maze, hay rides, face painting, they've got a dairy bar, a petting zoo. Um, and that runs uh, weekends through October. So, you know, it may be a little late to get your pumpkin uh, ready, but you can still go there and pick up and you should probably get a good deal on some of that. Sure. Yeah. And uh, who doesn't like a corn maze, right? So in Sunderland, Massachusetts, uh, Mike's Maze. So it's considered one of the most elaborate and immersive corn mazes in the country. So if you haven't been there, I'd recommend checking it out. So I was looking at it online, and it uh, really kind of blew me away, the, the scale and the scope of this place. Not so, enough to go there, though. Well, I think so. I mean, you're at the, mount, the foot of Mount Sugarloaf, first of all. So you're going to enjoy the you know, remnants of New England fall foliage. It's a little late in the season by then, but still, it's a beautiful venue. Um, not only is there a huge corn maze, which has a different theme every year, but there's uh, horse-drawn wagons potato cannons, pumpkin picking, um, they have a corn cafe serving uh, interesting food all day. So I would definitely check the calendar because they have all sorts of different events that kind of cycle in and out. So you never know what you're going to encounter when you get there. And it's a real working farm. And like we were talking about extending that season, our local agriculture really is thriving in a lot of ways by having these types of seasonal events and getting people onto the farm, getting them interested and active and, and really exploring the farming community. And it's a way for them to make a few extra dollars besides just growing their crops. Sure. And you, want, you might want to mention the uh, websites in case they want to look at it. Sure, so go. Mike's Maze is mikesmaze.com. Definitely check that out. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in going to Whitney's Farm, it's uh, whitneysfarm.com. Mm -hmm. And then we also have Connor's Farm in Danvers, Mass. So this is a seven acre corn maze, so a really big one. Um, so you can come by at night uh, with a flashlight and wander through the hysteria haunted cornfield uh, for some extra scares. So. Uh, Hopefully you'll end up emerging from it too. You know, sometimes yeah, it takes a nice. long time. I think there was a story in the news a couple of years ago of a gentleman who called 911 because he could not get out right. of the corn maze. So uh, Connor is really a great place to go. You can see the kids are able to pick pumpkins, apples. We've got the caramel apples, uh, donuts, cider donuts, train ride, uh, hay rides, all of those fun things, fun outdoor things. Um, for kids and in this era of you know the iPhone and the iPad and a lot of electronics and video games it's great to see kids like this outside 
um, you know, riding the tractor with uh, the farm animals, with the goats. Uh, that looks fun. That looks like sort of a small mechanical bull there. I don't know yeah. <laughs> what's happening there. But at any rate, you know, I think uh, Mark raises a really good point, though, too. You know, there's been so much talk recently about the difficulties of being a family farmer. Mm -hmm. And we're so lucky here in New England to have these wonderful family farms close by. And this is a whole nother season for them. So the summer season of flowers and vegetables, you know, is over. But now they've got the whole fall season. And that means, again, apple picking, corn mazes, um, anything they can do to diversify their business. And so I think it's really important to, you know, support them sure. at this time of year. Um, getting back to the haunted happenings, we also have uh, in Fall River, Mass, for fans of real life horror shows, uh, the Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast Museum in Fall River. And this is famous for being the location uh, where Lizzie Borden's parents met their fate, allegedly at the hands of Lizzie, although according to Mark, she was acquitted. But as the poem goes, uh, Lizzie Borden took an ax and gave her mother 40 wax and so on. So a lot of people are fascinated still by this case, which happened here in 1892. And uh, you can take a detailed museum tour, uh, which tells you all about the ax rampage. And you can stay overnight, believe it or not, or pop in for a daytime tour. So perhaps if you stay overnight, you end up staying in a haunted house. I don't know. Mm. But uh, you know, this is an attraction that has been around for quite some time and people really love. Um, now, in my hometown of Norton, I have to give a plug for my hometown, uh, very close to Wheaton College this weekend, we'll be doing haunted hayrides. So it's the um, VFW, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, who are hosting uh, this haunted hayride in the woods. And I think that in many communities across Massachusetts, we're going to be seeing um, similar events taking place this weekend because, of course, it's the weekend before Halloween. And in fact, we've got a tremendous parade in my hometown of Norton uh, that literally brings out thousands of people from communities all around. And this has actually become one of the most popular parades in the area um, for Halloween. And we have all sorts of folks from different communities participating, uh, pumpkin growers, firefighters, police officers, local officials, Boy Scouts, Cub, <laughs> Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, you know, the, everybody who has a group in the community, baton twirlers, you name it, we've got them in the Halloween parade in Norton. So it really is fun. And that's right on the main street mm -hmm. on Sunday. Yeah, we're really, we're really fortunate in New England to have this combination of local events, seasonal events. Can you imagine trying to celebrate Halloween in, in Florida when it's <laughs> balmy outside. There's something to be said about the cider, the pumpkins, the the, the crisp of the you know feeling in the air, and uh, people come from all over the world to visit some of these Halloween destinations like Salem. I mean, if you think about it, the Salem witch trials, people flock from all over the country and even the world to to explore Salem or the Lizzie Borden Museum. It's um, the place to be. These are stories that have stood the test of time sure. and have kind of created their own mythology around them. So we're really really fortunate in that respect. And if you're a AAA member, uh, we do have um, guidebooks and we've also, um, in our magazine, we also have other travel and Halloween and fall related festivities that you can check out. So okay. we can put up the contact numbers in case anybody wants to call or, or uh, check out their uh, site. Uh, Mike, if you can push that button, please. There we go. Uh, if you want to get in touch with Mary, uh, she's the Director of Public and Legislative Affairs. You can uh, email uh, to mmaguire at aaanortheast.com or you can call 401-865-9414. Is that the right number? That is the right number, okay. absolutely. And, and you know, uh, two great places right here in our backyard too, by the way. Ward's Berry Farm yep, uh, yeah. in Sharon, which is a great place. Yep. Uh, and terrific to go to in the fall, and they have the hay rides and all of those uh, sorts of things. And the other place that's great right here in our backyard is the Big Apple in Rentham. Oh. And they have apple picking there. I think apple picking is over, but they've got apples, they've got cider, uh, they've got hay rides, uh, they've got all sorts of great things there. And, and they actually have um, the giant pumpkin that won the Rhode Island pumpkin way off on display there mm -hmm. as well. I just saw it uh, last week. So really a great place to take your kids and to visit. And yeah, I saw you put up those Halloween tips. Be safe, be That's smart, it. be seen. That's yeah. right, a great yeah. motto. Absolutely. I, I'm still fascinated by the uh, maze, the mazes. Yeah. I, I, can, I can think of 
going into one and getting stuck in there and not even being able to get out of there. Uh, for some reason, I'm flashing back to Charlie on the MTA. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, the secret is is that you can actually cut through the corn if you have to get out. Oh, really? Yeah, you don't have to stay in the maze. Oh. If you've been in there, trapped oh. in there. I actually heard a, not to sidetrack, but I, there was a recent story that I thought was really funny. A, uh, a, a criminal was being chased by the police. The criminal went in the corn maze and the police got <laughs> lost in the maze and, and they lost track of the criminal. So I think you're onto something with yeah. the mis mystery of the corn maze. You have your wife bring the sandwiches and keep feeding them as you come back. <laughs> well, I, I thank you both for coming in with the um, Halloween tips and uh, look forward to you coming back in a year to do the same thing all over again. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. And uh, by the way, I'd like to thank uh, Mike Hammond for all his hard work in putting all the graphics and, and uh, photos together that Mary sent him. Uh, so also to Jeff Pickett, Dave Young, CJ Mullen, Frank Walsh, who occasionally comes in and helps out with the uh, camera work. Uh, Gina Cole, who comes in once in a while. She used to be full-time, now she's down to part-time. She has other obligations. Ellen Penniman, we welcome her into the, uh, the fold. She's uh, in the process of learning the buttons. Uh, Leo McGowan, we're hoping your, uh, your recuperation is, is progressing. And uh, we definitely have a thanks to Maxie's Deli in uh, Stoughton for the delicious sandwiches and stuff that he provided for our staff and the guests today. Meantime, this is Roy Cohen saying thank you for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you the next time. Bye-bye.